In this video, we're going to walk through how to set up your Google Classroom. And so there's a bunch of different steps and tips and tricks in this video that will ensure that your students are able to access information independently. So the first thing is you want to make a classroom resource page for your students. And if you are doing a personalized learning classroom, I highly suggest having a tracking timeline and a today's update in that classroom resource. These two Google slides, you will update all of the time. Also, when you create these resources, you might want to create them as materials, or if it is kind of an assignment, it might be view only. So that way, when you are updating it throughout the year, students are able to see those different resources that you share with them. So first thing is that syllabus. You might want to include a syllabus in your um, classroom. And so I've started a template that you are able to change the font, the background, the colors um, to kind of fit, and it will kind of walk you through a setting up your own syllabus. Then the today's update. This is great for personalized learning, especially if you're using like a game board or a roadmap. So when it comes to today's goals, Right here, we can see that students have a clear understanding of what is to expect today. You could also do this with an agenda. So again, today's goal, we're going to try to get to step number seven on our roadmap or our game board. We want to include um, a mini lesson. So this mini lesson is on topic sentences. This again is going to change every day. You can kind of see here how one day it was seven and then the next it was 10 and you're able to include the date. So you can just keep adding to this slide deck and then the newest version is on top. Then you wanna provide can-do activities. What do students do if they finish early? Um, what do you want them to do? And then is there any clarification that they need for the day uh, that maybe some of your students who were ahead or on track or ahead of pace are able to say, hey, this video didn't make sense, and then you can provide some extra clarification to your students. Okay, so this again is an example of kind of a today's goal that you're able to have in your Google Classroom, maybe in that resource that it will update for students. The tracking timeline is another great thing. There's different ways that you can have students track. This is using Google Spreadsheets. And so on Google Spreadsheets, we can see here that students are, um, tracking and they can use the drop down to let us know how they're doing. Maybe they're working on task 1A, maybe they're finished, maybe they need help. They can signal all of that. That is one option. Now there's so many different ways that you can have students track their lessons. And again, it doesn't have to be digital. You can have them um, do this on a piece of paper where they have a printed maybe game board and they're exiting out as they complete tasks. You can use a Google Doc, something like this, where you can kind of see catching up and the students have this drop down menu to quickly change um, how they are working. You might also kind of have a Google slide that you move the students and they can see where they're working. And it also has reminders or schedules. Another example is students have their individual game boards and then they can check off using these little checks where they are and where they have finished. So decide how you want to use a tracker. If it is going to be something like this, I would just assign it with that week or however you're going to organize your assignments. If you are going to reuse the same game board, then you can throw this into that resource area. Another way to do it is with Pear Deck. So you can use Pear Deck to also help you um, with your tracker. You can add Pear Deck over your game board or over your slides, and then students are able to kind of show, hey, I'm still on task one, and they can put all the dots there, and there will not be names, and you're quickly able to see where students are and what next steps every student needs to do. So again, lots of different examples on trackers, and if you need help with a tracker, let me know, but this can kind of motivate and keep students focused in their learning. Maybe you have like a tech support document or a, what do I do if I don't know a question? Um, so think about all of those different resources that you might have when it comes to students that might need help um, and you're not available. Um, so think about that as well. <clears throat> and then your classroom tour. Maybe you wanna give a classroom tour where you have a video um, of your classroom and that way students who are new can start to get familiar with your classroom. 
Again, this is a great place to put resources um, that will kind of always be needed throughout the year. The next thing is organization. There are multiple different ways to organize your Google Classroom. You can see here there's five ideas. Um, this is not limited though. So maybe you wanna organize by units. Unit one, Cold War. Unit two, unit three. Maybe you wanna organize by the week. The week of, whatever it is. Type of assignments, bell ringers. Maybe you wanna do daily work. Classroom is material. You can kind of decide again how you want to organize all of these materials for your organization of your classroom. If you're an elementary teacher, you might want to do subjects. If you're self-contained, do you want to have one class or do you want four different classes for your uh, students to go to? <clears throat> and then some teachers have a today topic. And what they do is after that, they move those assignments to a different area. So again, these are everything that you're going to need for the day it goes up top and then they move everything down throughout um, the week as it goes away. Also with organization, you might wanna use emojis. So emojis can make it quick and easy for your students to see uh, different things. You can also create like a key. So maybe if I put the check mark, that means it's a resource. If I have popcorn, you need to watch a video. If I add these books, it's a reading assignment, okay? So again, adding emojis can really help your students differentiate the different assignments and you can start to create a meaning for your classroom. There's two different ways you can get emojis. You can go to this website, emoji, emojipedia.com, and you can copy and search. So if I type video, all of these different videos are going to pop up, and then I can highlight it, Command C, and then I can paste it wherever I might need it to go. Okay, so right there's my video. Or you can hit Control Command Spacebar on a Mac, and you're able to find the popcorn. You can also right click on a Chromebook and it will have special characters that you're able to add. So multiple different ways. There's also some extensions that you can get that will allow you to add emojis, but emojis just allow you to organize your Google Classroom and bring that extra flair for your students. Clear naming patterns are key. So when you are using Google Classroom, consider maybe numbering your assignments. This makes it super easy when you can go up on the board or your tracking sheet and you can say, okay, complete number 84 and 83 today. Your students can quickly find those numbers in your Google Classroom. So again, using the numbers can help students find material very, very quickly. Another thing is you wanna teach your students that if they use Control F, so again, that is on a Chromebook, on a MacBook, it is Command F, you can see up here, this little search bar comes up and this works on the web as well. And I can type in that hashtag or I can type in number and it's gonna show me everywhere that pops up. See how it's highlighting it um, in that green color? So I can quickly see that number is twice throughout this whole presentation and I can quickly find that number. Students can quickly type in 83 and it's gonna show in their Google Classroom. Students can type in keywords such as like Tuck, Quizlet, and it will pop up and highlight how many times you wrote that in their Google Classroom. It also works on the web. So if they're reading an article and they need to find some keywords, it works there just as well. So teaching students how you name your documents, but also teaching them that Control F is super, super important. And then students can access material independently. So we want our students to access material independently. And there's three ways that can kind of help with getting students to that independent stage. First one is you need to set clear routines. Okay, so going to Google Classroom often, walking them through it the first couple times. The second time is practice finding material. Maybe you create a scavenger hunt for your students to find different um, emojis or to explain what an emoji means if you made a keyboard uh, or a key. Have your students practice finding the material. Another thing is playing Fast and Curious. This is a great game for goal setting and review. So what students do is they have this Google slide. And on this Google slide, on Monday, let's say it took seven minutes, and this is a real story, seven minutes to log into Google Classroom. I use a count up timer and on Tuesday, the students took six minutes. They won by one minute. 
This is also in their Google Classroom, this template. It is shipped out to every single student to make a copy. And the students can go in and they are able to add their own personal time. Their goal is to beat their time every single day. So our procedure is, okay, I'm gonna start the time up, start up time out, timer in three, two, one. Students have to go find this document in their Google Classroom and they have to add their time. They look at the count up timer and they add their time. On Wednesday, let's say it took three, five minutes and 25 seconds. On Thursday, it took 4.32. And on Friday, it took two minutes. Look how much instructional time we saved by reviewing and repracticing how to get into Google Classroom. So huge, huge, huge for the students to be able to get in, but it's also important to practice it. And sometimes they like to see this practice. Fast and Curious is an edu protocol and it's typically used with vocabulary. So maybe if you like this strategy and you can see how the students really like to see their growth and they like to um, time themselves, you can use this activity with vocabulary. I have a teacher that does it every single day at the end of the day at three and the students do it quickly. They write their score and then they come in tomorrow to try to beat their score. And the students are so excited to see their progress that it's even transferred to pre-tests and final assessments in her classroom. Okay, so after getting your students in independently, another great way to help with directions and to clone yourself is with video. Um, video is a huge time saver. So if you can, try to video your Google Classroom. What I would like for this assignment is you are going to create your Google Classroom on how you wanna organize it. And once you create that uh, Google Classroom, you're gonna create a screencast explaining it to a student. So create that video explaining it to a student or parent or guardian and explain how your Google Classroom set up. Have them watch it at home or that first week of school. And again, it can help clone you so you can take attendance, so you can work with a small group of students, so you can deal with recess drama. Okay, so Screencastify is my go-to tool, but you can use any Screencast tool. Screencastify, WeVideo, Loom, and there's so many more. Again, figure out what's comfortable for you, and if you need help, let me know. Once you're ready, you're going to record. And you always wanna to try to include your video if possible in your video. Research shows that having your video in there makes it more personal and it makes it more um, easier for your students to connect with the video. Then down here is the toolbar and you're able to use the highlighter. You can um, use the shapes. You can change your mouse. So see when I click, you can see a little fire. Sometimes that helps when students are trying to follow along and they can see you use maybe the focus, maybe just the classic, maybe when I click it turns red. Okay, all of those can really help your students when it comes to um, creating a screencast. Then you wanna upload your video. So I like to upload my videos to YouTube because I think it makes it extra um, accessible but you can just upload it to Google Drive. You can share it straight from Screencastify, WeVideo. Uh, however you create, feel free to share it that way as well. If you need help, again, let me know. And then the next thing is keeping the stream to a minimum. So on Google Classroom, there is a stream and this stream can get pretty busy. So what we wanna do is, let me go ahead and move my video, is up here in settings, you can scroll down and right here, middle page, you can hide the notifications. I highly suggest this. Students will not see your assignments post, they will just see announcements. Another thing I like to change is students can only comment. When I have this on, students like to post all over the Google Classroom stream and it gets really confusing. I wanna be able to post announcements or I can make a question board and then my students can comment on the post that I create. They cannot just start a new comment. Okay, I don't, I want them to be able to comment. So that's why I don't turn this one off. I have though, when I've seen different students um, go hi, hello, and we've had a class conversation about why that's not appropriate. Um, but and I'll turn it off for a little bit. And then I'll turn it back on because I think that feature is really important. <clears throat> the next thing is teaching students to mark as done. So right here, when students have an assignment, and they are finished with that assignment, teach them to mark it as done because it can help with their executive functioning of time management. 
And I would also encourage you to add due dates to your assignments. So make sure you add due dates to your assignments. And once your students are um, ready to go, they can go to this to-do list and they can see every assignment that has been assigned to them. These ones have no due dates. Missing, so I can see that this was due on Sunday, March 20th. And then they can go back and kind of see, okay, where do I, where should I start? Oh, this one's from September 19th from 2020. Um, probably don't need to do that one. So I probably need to figure out where is a good place to start. But adding those due dates can help students use this to-do list to kind of see, okay, what's missing? What's done? What can I work on? Um, so help students by adding due dates and teaching them how to mark as done and go to that to-do list. And this is just a time saver tip. You do not have to do this, but clone your courses. Um, if you teach seven or eight different classes or three different classes, make a template course. Make a course that has your topics, your syllabus, everything else that you might need, and then make a copy of that class um, for the other classes over the school year. So then I would make period one, copy period two, copy period three, and it just makes it a lot easier for you to manage. Um, another thing that you can do is if you loved your Google Classroom setup from last year, you can copy that course and everything's gonna be a draft. So again, every assignment's gonna be a draft, so you just have to assign it when you are ready. Drafts cannot be seen by your students, but once you push them out, they are ready to go for next year and you can make any changes that you might need to make. Okay, so again, that was tips and tricks for setting up your Google Classroom. If you need support, please reach out. I am more than happy to help. Um, and feel free to add me as a co-teacher if you do need assistance. And I cannot wait to see your video on how you set up your Google Classroom.